This is AEDT 1120U, Foundations of Digital Teaching and Learning Technologies. The title of this video clip is Web 3.0, Semantic Web. The analysis questions for this video clip are, number one, how does the Desjardins interaction model characterize Web 3.0? Number two, how does Spivak's meta web model characterize the semantic web? And number three, compare and contrast the two models with respect to Web 3.0. The HCHI model, Desjardins 2001-2005, is being used in this course as it outlines the major technological competencies that will be explored throughout the course. According to the Desjardins interaction model, Desjardins 2009, Web 3.0 technologies lie at the intersection of the technical, informational, and epistemological orders. Consequently, competencies which are required for each of these orders should be required to work in a proficient manner with technologies that have affordances of this nature. For example, semantic webs, otherwise known as concept mapping technologies, such as open source tool CMAP, which can be found at cmap.ihmc.us, or the proprietary products Smart Ideas, which can be found at smarttech.com, and Inspiration, which can be found at inspiration.com, require the learner to input a series of concepts, this is technical and informational competencies, that are interrelated, and then to manipulate the organization of those concepts, again, technological competencies, in order to provide a snapshot of current thinking. The software processes the inputted information to allow for its organization, reorganization, and analysis. This helps learners to integrate new ideas and to think critically, which is, of course, epistemological competencies. I'll let you analyze the placement of knowledge bases in this category as a further example. The graphic on the screen illustrates the intersection of these three orders. Notice that social competencies are excluded since communication with others is not a strict requirement for tools that fit in this category. This slide presents a slightly different way of looking at a related scenario. Nova Spivak on his blog, Minding the Planet, suggested that internet technologies can be categorized using two dimensions, degree of information connectivity and the degree of social connectivity. This typology becomes a conjecture that we started to explore last week and will conclude this week. Wikipedia on its uh, Web 2.0, um, Web 3.0 page suggests that Web 3.0 definitions vary widely with the majority of characterizations including features of a semantic and personalized flavor. In other courses, I port point to affordances such as the, in quote, others also looked at, unquote, on Amazon.ca which is, uh, has a different kind of title to it, and chapters.indigo.ca um, as being indicative of the semantic web. The programs used on these sites report the viewing habits of individual customers to make recommendations to other customers. Keep in mind that these are examples of the type of characteristics that could be part of a semantic web, yet these programs are limited to individual sites at this time. The Google search engine, however, makes similar recommendations when searching for items across the entire internet, and lately Google has taken the concept much further in order to place advertisements that are relevant to certain demographic group groupings as determined by their search history. Find out about the information that Google collects about you at Google Web History, and you can find that at history.google.com. There are a number of challenges to the further development and implementation of a semantic web, and these are outlined in more detail in the Web 3.0 Wikipedia article, but I'll list them for now. Vastness, vagueness, uncertainty, inconsistency, and deceit. All of these are issues that need to be addressed in order for Web 3.0 to become a reality. The theoretical considerations for this video clip are as follows. Take a look at pages 17 to 49 in the Mike Evans presentation document found at cscan.org and the link is found on the page for you. Please be aware that this document is primarily an, an, an analysis that was conducted from and for a business perspective. While it has limited value in an education context, it will help to understand the ideas that are implicit when looking at the development of the World Wide Web and the Internet. The synthesis questions for this video clip are, number one, 
There are, are there examples of Web 3.0 technologies that require social competencies? Why should these be included or excluded from classification in Web 3.0? Number two, take a closer look at the examples that Spivak gives for Web 3.0 technologies and determine whether you think they fit within the Web 3.0 description given above. In addition, consider the placement of the semantic web quadrant in the high degree of information connectivity and low degree of social connectivity portion of the meta web graph. Is this placement in agreement with the positioning of the earlier web 1.0 and web 2.0? And finally, question number three, how would you interpret the definition for the semantic web that Mike Evans includes on page 50 of his presentation file? And does this agree with the ideas presented earlier in this vid clip? Why or why not? And that brings us to the end of this video.